And, you know, the transition to talk about another person who needs to see their entire wealth liquidated, uh, we got to talk about Jeff Bezos. I, um, I think, you know, it's one of those things where we can, I think every smart person out there understands that Jeff Bezos stepping down from, from Amazon, you know, stepping down is not, um, he's not going to separate himself from the company. He's still going to have a lot of say, he's still going to be very much, um, involved. Right. But let's pretend for a second that he actually was stepping back, right. And taking all of his wealth, um, with him, Amazon would not change. Because the reason that Amazon is a wicked and evil company um, is because it is a company that is extremely profitable and has a monopoly. And to do that, you have to be extremely wicked. Like, I think moral and personal critiques can be really helpful. Like, I loved when Bernie Sanders was coming at Bezos and all these other billionaires by name. I thought that's really important for like class consciousness and for, you know, furthering class war. Um, it does incredible work at undermining ideology um, because it makes clear to people that what is being done in this society is so unnatural to control people, to limit their ability to use the bathroom, um, you know, to, to re reduce their ability to communicate with one another, to prevent them from being able to join together in a bargaining unit to make sure that they're getting fair wages and fair treatment. Um, to to do to control somebody on that level is disgusting but then let's also not forget the mechanism <laughs> um, by which they control people they control people because they control access those people working people's access um to their ability to acquire food health care shelter shelter and life that's extremely unnatural and you can understand that. And people do understand that. That's why, you know, like being against the excessive wealth of the billionaires, being against even big corporations is not even something that is uniquely left wing, right? And it's really important to build on that human consciousness, that human understanding. That's an immoral system and there's something really wrong with it, right? Um, but it, it's, and, and, and it also should be noted that it creates, it makes people do bad things, right? It creates monsters like Jeff Bezos. Um, but I think it's also important that we not fall into the trap ever of, of thinking that, you know, these people do these wicked things solely because Jeff Bezos has, you know, an impure soul. He certainly has a lot of issues, but he has issues that were developed because he decided that he wanted to make as much money as possible because he yeah. lives in a society and in a system that tells people that that's a good thing. And that is a cause that you are able to subvert all other human uh, emotions for. Yeah, you try building Amazon and maintaining purity of soul. No, you like you literally will not be able. Cannot to do, it, do it. Right. That's why it's so funny. Like Google having the "Don't be evil" catchphrase back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Like just transparently. Like I mean, I feel like at a certain point, like we already realized this as a society, and Google's just like shit, guys. Right, we're gonna be the new company. Mm -hmm. that, and yeah, <laughs> and and. No, no, exactly. And like, I mean, and they spend so much money on PR. And that's one thing too, you have to understand about what Jeff Bezos is doing. He's a savvy guy. He gets that his, when I, these guys get that the writing is on the wall um, and that people are fed up with the concentration of wealth and power that yeah. they have. But trying again, to fuck off to Mars. We all, well, yeah. And like, exactly. Like we all know um, that he's not disappearing for the company or from his stolen wealth, right? But let's just pretend that he actually was just cashing out and walking away from everything. He's not giving away his money. That's because he doesn't respect people and he doesn't respect democracy. Think about what Matt was just referencing. His disgusting answer about what he should do with his wealth, right? Where he says, well, the only logical thing I could do with my winnings is to go to space, right? Which is absolutely disgusting and an unhinged answer. Psycho. Um, but and we can make points it's like, oh, well, actually, you should do it. You should use it to, you know, help people. You should use it to fight homelessness and all these kind of things. Why would he do that? He understands this system. He understands that doing something like that in like the earnest sense would mean threatening the system that allows him to have this much power. This is a guy who leveraged people's fear of being homeless their entire life, right, to extract as much as possible from them. Right? Why would he try to alleviate the system that has put him on top? Because 
you know, he understands that doing something like that is actually a direct threat to him. Um, and it also has to be noted that just like Bill Gates and Zuckerberg and all these other billionaires, we've talked about it. We talked about this a lot on TMBS, and I'm sure we'll do more about it on, on this show as well. How the, you know, about the philanthropy scam. Um, it's not only a scam because they're trying to wash their image in people's in public imagination, um, but it's also the most blatant power grab that that you could ever do because this is somebody saying i'm not going to let uh, society uh, tax me and use this money in ways that they think is just i think that i'm smarter than society and i'm going to use it in ways that i want to which just so happen to personally benefit me and my friends and and all of these other folks right just like we talked about a couple of weeks ago bill gates uh you know and his just disastrous foray uh, into agriculture now in the united states but years and years of it in africa right these yeah. guys are anti-democratic figures. Their existence is an affront to democracy. It's it's even, I mean, Gil Scott Heron has the great poem, Whitey on the Moon, that talks about, you know, in the midst of all the, um, you know, uh, economic inequality of the 60s, 70s, um, we're, you know, going to space. Mm -hmm. And it's even more egregious that a private individual is who is like making money off of a lot of, you know, postal carriers and stuff like that. Like every, like all of those, that's the hard work. Like there's a funny joke about like, um, uh, diamond, uh, and like how much bank labor he must've done to earn uh, how many billions of dollars that he has. Right. Like, of course, this is all everybody else's work that he just gets to be in charge of mm -hmm. now and decide like, I'm going to go to space and try to be space King for a future space civilization. Like, <laughs> That's literally what the guy is saying to you right now. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, man, we love the innovator. It, it, I mean, like Matt Damon, I didn't watch it, but that Elysium movie where like rich people <laughs> escape to like a satellite, like we know, all know what this is. And, and it's funny, I mean, to see that like go through the business press, like it's interesting that he would decide oh, yeah. to do that. What a, what a fun project. Like he's fucking painting like W. Bush after retirement <laughs> yeah i mean it's like that kind of drooling coverage is just another example of of what happens with just years and years of, of privatization of the media right uh where people just because local newsrooms across the country are just so devoid of of funding you just take press releases um, from from jeff bezos and from amazon and all these corporations that essentially just do it again i wanted to put this clip of bernie sanders up um because i actually think it highlights one of the big projects of this show and the kind of political education that we're, we want to try to build because that kind of analysis of Jeff Bezos um, that, you know, we can start from the moral place, but you need to get to the point where you can say he would like anyone in that position would do the same kind of wickedness because that system creates it, right? We can, again, we can be mad and should be mad and should call out people by name and, you know, hold them responsible for what they did. Uh, but we also need to understand that there's no level of soulfulness or like meditation or like heart, you know, nice walk through the woods that Jeff Bezos or any of these people are going to do that is going to stop them being what they are, right? Because they, exist in a system that tells them they need to maximize profits and maximizing profits for corporations will always be at the expense of working people. And Bernie Sanders does a great job here at, at talking about how he found all of these ideas uh, connected. This is a phenomenal clip. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I really did not like to see bullies. I didn't like to see, you know, stronger kids picking on weaker kids. I didn't like you know, discrimination, and I didn't like that. I didn't like power plays on the part of people who had the power. Uh, but that was just kind of instinctual. And, you know, as a kid, I felt strongly about racism uh, and poverty. And when I went to the University of Chicago, I was not a good student, but what I did do was spend an enormous amount of time down in the, what they call the stacks of the library. It was a very good library. And I would bury myself in there, uh, reading everything that I could read about history and politics and sociology and economics and psychology. I did a whole lot of reading. I was a terrible, not a terrible, was not a good student, let's say that. <laughs> uh, but I did a whole lot of reading. But what the Young People's Socialist League did to me, it helped me put two and two together in my mind. In other words, we don't like poverty. We don't like racism. We don't like war. We don't like exploitation. What do they all have in common? And people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm against poverty, but why 
for example, at a time when we are the wealthiest country in the history of the world, why do we have 43 million people living in poverty? Why do we have such an unfair distribution of wealth and income? What does wealth and power mean? How does it influence politics? Money always played a dominant role, a very important role in who gets elected. Now, as a result of Citizens United, it is far worse. Who decided that World War I would take place? Who even knows why we went to war in World War I? What was that about? Who makes these decisions? So what my studies tried to do is put two and two and two together. And uh, that is why you know, I kind of evolved to an analysis which tries to tell, explain to me why what goes on in, in the world uh, today and then. I mean, he, he, is the, he was the real deal. And I think, you know, we can be more explicit about, about some of that analysis. But uh, that's exactly why uh, political education is important. And it's something that I harp on a lot. And I hope I'm not boring people with it. But it, it, it's, it's, it is something that is, is really critical to have as part of our movement. Because I see people say things like, oh, if you're, if you're working class, you already understand. It's like you, you understand that there's something a, a, afoot. Right, you understand that there's something wrong, and you probably even have like a real desire to to push back against the system. But what you need is that next step um, to understand what that system is and how it operates, and then most importantly, how to do something about it. And that's one of the most vexing and important questions uh, that the left has to deal with. And we're not going to be able to dance our way around it. We won't be able to theorize our way around it. Um, but if we don't start building that kind of understanding and building movements that are thinking together and participating in politics together, we'll never get out of it. Yeah, to me, it's like the most convincing answer to like existential questions like why am I here, for instance, <laughs> right? Like like if I like for me, thinking about that question and when it's posed in like the 2000s or 90s, it's like I'm here to uh, change the world and, you know, I'm going to join like a corporate law firm or something to do that, right? Like, like that sort mm -hmm. of generic like why am I here? But like to you can actually answer these questions of like why you're here according to like the capitalist system like mm -hmm. why why uh, are you allowed into certain countries with from certain areas um for uh, also like um right like all these mm -hmm. questions have answers within these structures and uh it's actually like a, a a big moment in someone's life when you start to drill in on just the reality of it because it tethers you to the world we live in um, and I, I mean, I think only um, these sorts of politics really approaches that. And I think other politics are mainly to obscure these sorts of um, this, this sort of education. Exactly. And it's like, you know, that's why the self-help industry is like, what, a six, seven billion dollar right. industry. Um, and we're actually going to go through some of that, like, uh, oh, yes. grind stuff with the post game. Folks, um, we got an upscale luxury post game coming, uh, for whatever. patron members. So you're going to want to get on patreon.com slash left reckoning if you want that upscale luxury. Yeah, post -game. Get, that, get that mindset. Um, this should be it should be a lot of fun.